Hey folks, before we get into this video, I got a question for you. What is your favorite Pokemon and why? Leave a comment down below. I'm very curious on this one. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest news stories for Nintendo over the last 24 hours, or in this case, over the weekend. This week, Bayonetta 3 comes out and we got some news about that. Oh, and we're not really done. We got a look at some sales charts and a few other little tidbits, including a major update to Nintendo Switch Online that you're going to want to hear about. So with, without further ado, let's buckle up and get ready for the news. And our first story deals with Sonic Frontiers. Yes, folks, Sonic Frontiers has gone gold, or I guess that's not the term they used. The lead director of the game said the game is now complete from a developer perspective. They are no longer actively developing Sonic Frontiers, which would be shocking if they still were since the game comes out in two and a half weeks. In fact, this whole going gold is pretty close to release, but what are you going to do? I suspect there's going to be a really, really big day one update. That being said, yes, you can go ahead and pre-order the game. We have a link to pre-order it down in the description. Pre-ordering through that link does help support the channel. That being said, hey, I'm pretty excited for Sonic Frontiers. We'll be checking it out ourselves in a, you know two and a half weeks or so. And let's get into the next story. Now, next, I mentioned that, hey, Bayonetta 3 comes out this week. Big deal. Comes out on the 28th. Yes, we also have a pre-order link for that down in the description as well. But what is actually cool is that Platinum Games responded to this entire Bayonetta 3 voice acting situation. Not going to give a quick recap for you. If you're interested, you can go check out our prior videos on this. I want to get into what Platinum Games said, plus one additional piece to the Bayonetta 3 news story. So Platinum Games released an official response on Twitter saying, we at Platinum Games offer our sincerest appreciation to everyone who has contributed to creating the Bayonetta series over the years, as well as the community that served as its foundation. We give our full support to Jennifer Hale as the new Bayonetta and align with everything in her statement. We ask people to please refrain from any further comments that would disrespect Jennifer or any of the other contributors to this series. So again, this is a pretty stock standard response. Again, I don't really think that anything else is going to happen at this point. This story is kind of over and done with. But what's not done with is Bayonetta 3 itself because it has leaked. That's right. There are tons of footage, spoilers everywhere. This is pretty standard. We all know that most Switch exclusive games end up leaking early and Bayonetta 3 is, well, just another one to do that. So I just wanted to warn people out there in case you're trying to avoid Bayonetta 3 this week. I, I don't really know. I came across the spoilers because I was looking for them, not because I wanted to spoil the game for myself, but just to make sure they exist. But yeah, I, had, I didn't come across them organically, so maybe you won't come across them organically either. Uh, know that we won't be covering any of the spoilers here at this channel. There's really only one series that we cover spoilers on, and we're very careful how we do it, and that's Zelda. But that is something that we will obviously deal with at the appropriate time and, you know, talk about it in the appropriate setting, not here in a prime five. That being said, let's get into our next story. So Nintendo Switch Online has a very interesting update. We now know what games are coming in November, and this actually gives us a pretty good idea of what's coming in December. And this is really big news because what's coming is still to many very surprising. So first up, they announced for November that we're getting Mario Party uh, and Mario Party 2. So yeah, they're they're dropping those early November. They put it out on Twitter and this kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen in December. And if we're honest, they just left it wide open for GoldenEye. Now, GoldenEye was announced back in September at the September Direct, and all they said was coming soon. They didn't give a year on it. Now, look, the Xbox version of this is going to end up having better visuals, upgraded visuals and resolution and all this stuff. And the Switch version isn't going to have so much of that going on. However, the Switch will have exclusive online multiplayer, which too many is going to make this the definitive version of GoldenEye. So I'm really looking forward to this addition to the Nintendo 64 online. It's probably the game that's going to make me actually open up the Nintendo 64 online app, maybe play some games with some of you guys out there on a live stream. I'm pretty excited about this edition. And look, it's not confirmed for December, so we'll cover it when it is announced. But it makes me kind of feel like this is a big deal. We haven't had this game re-released officially, you know, ever. So I'm really happy that this is probably coming in 
December. So our next story here is dealing with sparks of hope. I just want to give a little bit of a sales update. No, we don't have launch sales numbers yet. We'll get a little bit from Japan and the UK and stuff later this week. We're not going to be MPD for a while. And who knows, Nintendo and Ubisoft could make a launch sales announcement if they want. But I do know that as of the time of recording this episode, that it is number one in, I believe, almost every eShop in the world. It's definitely number one in the UK, number one in Japan, number one in the US, number one in Australia. And who knows, by the time you're listening to this, maybe it's no longer number one. But at the time of the recording, it is the number one best-selling game on all of the Nintendo Switch eShop. And I think that's really cool. We don't really get digital sales data anyway, so we have no idea how many numbers. But the fact that it's still number one going through the weekend really bodes well for this game. It's going to be interesting to see how this game performs in general. Uh, some people that maybe played the first one didn't like it, so they might not pick up this one. This could also be bring in new fans. We'll have to wait and see, but I thought Sparks of Hope was really well. I reviewed the game if you want to check it out, and I don't know. Let's get into our next story. And our last story deals with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and we're not talking leaks. Remember, we haven't really been covering the leaks outside of very early days, uh, but what happened is there was an official preview event, which means this is official information that the Pokemon company wants out there. So we're going to go over some new details that dropped from that preview event. None of these, I would say, are story spoilers. There's actually no story details. These are just kind of gameplay mechanics. So let's get into some of the new stuff we learned from these previews. So we learned that trainers no longer initiate battles automatically and must be spoken to before battles can be triggered. That's a pretty big change. Players can throw their Pokeball at wild Pokemon to initiate battles, which is similar to Legends Arceus. Not really the exact same, of course, because you could catch Pokemon that way. Instead, this just initiates a battle. I think that's a little interesting. Uh, wild Pokemon will remain where they are and may spectate battles. So that's that's interesting. Shinies appear shiny in the overworld. I think we sort of already knew this, but now it's confirmed. Uh, there are reportedly a lot of customization options outside of Academy uniforms. Supposedly the most in any Pokemon game to date. That is what preview uh, people who play the preview are saying. Character customization can be done at the very start of the game. That's pretty standard. Players can change their Pokemon. Pokemon's nickname whenever they want. I think that's pretty cool. And you can also change your Pokemon's moves whenever you want, similar to Legends Arceus or Arceus or however you pronounce that. Look, I think that these are all obviously really positive changes for the Pokemon franchise. I know I'm picking up a copy of the game. Gonna give it a chance, guys. Uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl didn't do it for me. Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus, whatever did do it for me. This might be a little bit of blending of both worlds. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, really, it's open world Pokemon. And since I've been waiting for it since I was a kid, I got to be fair and give it a try. Anyways, guys, I'm Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's Prime 5. We will have a bonus video later today at around 3 p.m. Central. There's a specific topic I want to talk about. Uh, it's about a piece of news we didn't cover in here because I feel like this is big enough for its own video. So look for that to drop later today. Otherwise, folks, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next video.